In this story, we are going to learn about a unique person and a unique artist that created something was magnificent at the time that he was living in before maybe 100 or 100 and a half, uh, 150 years ago. So this person, he was living in the time of 18, 18, about 1850. 1853. 53, yes. So he was living in the years of 1853. Before uh, 100 or 100 and a half uh, years ago, uh, was there any television or was there any iPhones or telephone or what? What do no. you think? There was nothing of these things. Nothing. The people, what they had at that time, they didn't even have cars, like cars that they run with the, uh, with the gas or with the, with the diesel. They had cars that run uh, with what? With horses. So they didn't have cars like us. And even if the if they have cars, the most sophisticated car that they ever had was the car that has a small engine and you have uh, to to uh, charge it with batteries, with charge it with electricity. So they didn't have any type of the cars that we have, not the buildings that we have, not the tractors and the, the vehicles that we have right now. So they had less things than us. But what they had at that time was the brain. People were so much talented and so much, uh, so much talented and with knowledge that they had inspirational what uh, inventions and something. They did things that nobody could imagine before. So one of these people was Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. This is his name, and this story for today is what is biography about him. So the general of this story is what? Biography. Who can tell me? What does it mean, biography? It's, it's a story of a person's oh, life know. written by another person. Excellent. So it's a story that I write it about a person, but it's not written by him. It's written by another person. For example, um, for example, I see that uh, Mariana, for example, let's take one of the class. Mariana, for example, is a great character and she achieved something great in her life. Okay. And I want to write a story about Mariana. So to let all the people learn about who is this person and I want them to learn from her. So I will come and write a story about Mariana. Does Mariana uh, wrote the story about herself or I wrote her? I, I wrote the story. I wrote it. I wrote it. So now it's a biography. Since I am the one who wrote the story for another person, it's a biography. But for example, if Mariana is a great person and she achieved something great in her life and she wants to write her own story for people to let them know how was her life. So if she writes the story of herself, it would be autobiography. This is the difference. So auto, it means something that you've done it by yourself. That's why when auto comes with everything, it means that this thing run by itself so when you put the word auto with the word biography it means what it means that the person do or write the story about himself but when you put the word biography without auto it means what a person write a story about another person about another person that's what we call it, biography. So our story for today is biography. So the writer right here, he wrote a story about a famous person and a unique person at that time. His name is Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. Taib, who can tell me, who is the author of this story that we are reading today? Barbara, Barbara Curley. Curley. Barbara Curley. Uh -huh. Barbara Curley. Curley. Very good. And then this is the spelling of her name, correct or no? No. Uh, K E K K E R E R mm -hmm. L E E Y L E Y. Curly. Question of the week is what? How can how can I understand? I can't hear you all the past. Yes, I can't hear you all at once. Yes, I was how can how can one 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 one? How, how Mariana? Huh? How? How can paleontologists help us understand the past? Okay. How can 
value ontologist help us yes help us what help, help us understand, understand the past understand the past, the past. okay how can uh, paleo ontologists help us understand the past to answer this question and to answer the whole uh, story about waterhouse hawkins we are going to see this video before and then after that we are going to do the story so let's see it together How can paleontologists help us understand the past? Paleontologists are scientists who study dinosaurs, or to be more precise, the remains of dinosaurs, as well as other organisms from the distant past. Paleontologists often look for fossils, which show them a trace or impression of an organism that lived millions of years ago. From fossils, a paleontologist can make illustrations, models, or even giant replicas of creatures that have been extinct for hundreds of thousands of years. In this way, they share their knowledge with us in books, at museums, and on television. So paleontologists uncover the past so that we can discover its secrets this week, you will learn how to understand the past by learning from paleontologists, thinking about animals from the past, and examining the remains of extinct animals. How do you think paleontologists can help us understand the past? So, as you can see in this video, paleontologists are scientists who go to uh, some places uh, in the wild and try to understand and to search for the remains and fossils of other dinosaurs and other creatures that lived since long time ago. And through these remains, they try to understand how these animals, the shape of these animals was, what is the shape of these animals, how they moved, what they ate, uh, what is uh, the shape of them, the size of them. So they try to understand the history that we had before and we didn't see it. Because nobody saw in his whole life, nobody saw a dinosaur before. So these dinosaurs lived uh, since long time ago, like before 7,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago. And uh, after that, at the, at the time that the dinosaurs lived, there was no human on, uh, on the earth. Because nobody could live with these dinosaurs. So subhanAllah, Allah created uh, some type of disease or something that made all of these animals die. When they died... We came, uh, the people came and the, the generation after generation came until we reach our age. But when we search inside some mountains and some caves, we will find the remains and the fossils of these uh, animals and of these dinosaurs. They are so big that even uh, or uh, only the finger of one of these animals is the tall of one person. It's, they are so big and the size of them is so huge. So these scientists right here, they are the one who's responsible to search about the dinosaurs and the remaining skeletons for those fossils and creatures. طيب, how they can help us to understand the history? Because every time they bring some of these remains and put it in the museum, they show it for people and they show the size of these things for people, we can have insight about our history. This is one thing. Another thing, they can give us insight about how in the history these animals used to live and what they ate and how they are dangerous because some of them they were eating meats so if they were living in our time they would kill a lot of people so all of this would make us understand without seeing them and without having information about them nobody would know anything about dinosaurs right because nobody saw it so these scientists are so important and so uh, our uh, our hero for today, which is Mr. Hawkins, because he made something significant in his country. What he made and what is the story of that person? 
This is what we are going to learn together. So this is a biography a person wrote about Hawkins. Let's go flip the page and let's start the story to hear about it and who is this person. London, 1853. Horse-drawn carriages clattered down the streets of London in 1853. Gentlemen tipped their hats to ladies passing by. Children ducked and dodged on their way to school. But Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins had no time to be out and about. Waterhouse, as he liked to call himself, hurried toward his workshop in a park south of town. He was expecting some very important visitors. He didn't want to be late. So as you can see, this is how the setting of the time that our hero that was living in. It was 1853. By that time, they didn't have any cars, airplanes, phones, or anything. Those people, they were simple people. And the transportation for them was a carrot like this, a cart like this, and uh, dragged by horses. So they didn't have engines or uh, electricity or anything. So this man, Hawkins, owned what a workshop near of the park and he was expecting a very important visitors who are the, these visitors as he neared his workshop waterhouse thought of the hours he'd spent outside as a boy like many artists he had grown up sketching the world around him by the time he was a young man he'd found his true passion animals he loved to draw and paint them but what he really loved was sculpting models of them through his care and hard work, they seem to come to life. You see, this is Hawkins. Everybody is just moving and walking and playing, but he is just occupied with his paintings and with his, uh, with his drawings that he has in his mind about animals. Now, Waterhouse was busy with a most exciting project. He was building dinosaurs. His creations would prowl the grounds of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's new art and science museum, the Crystal Palace. Even though the English had found the first known dinosaur fossil many years before, and the bones of more dinosaurs had been unearthed in England since then, in 1853, most people had no idea what a dinosaur looked like. Scientists weren't sure either, for the only fossils were some bits and pieces, a tooth here, a bone there. But they thought that if they studied a fossil and compared it to a living animal, they could fill in the blanks. And so, with the help of scientist Richard Owen, who checked every muscle, bone, and spike, that's exactly what Waterhouse was doing. He wanted to create such perfect models that anyone, a crowd of curious children, England's leading scientists, even the Queen herself, could gaze at his dinosaurs and see into the past. Okay. Since this person is interested about drawings and about paintings, he wanted to make a project that impressed who? Impress the Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria was the Queen of Britain by that time. And she was a very important lady. And she is, was the ruler of Britain at that time. And she was very young with her, what? With her husband, Prince, um, Prince Albert. And he wanted to make something very nice and magnificent for them so she can be impressed by it. He was thinking, okay, I will draw animals, animals, but I don't want regular animals that we know, that everybody saw. No, I want something that nobody know uh, in that time, and that age. He was thinking, thinking, and he thought about what? Dinosaurs. So let's make dinosaurs. I'm going to make a sculpture of dinosaurs. But the only problem is by that time, they didn't have internet to search Google and to go to search what is the shape of a dinosaur. Or to give me, for example, a movie about a dinosaur, then I will know how's the shape of that thing. By that time that Benjamin Hawkins lived, there was no uh, technology, no knowledge, no pictures. Nobody know what does it mean to have a dinosaur and what, is, what does it mean uh, the shape of a dinosaur, Aslan. So he thought, okay, the only clue that he has is what some fossils about dinosaurs these fossils was only about teeth of dinosaurs fingers or some bones from here and there but not the whole skeleton 
okay so he never saw the whole skeleton so he took the help from a man he's very known of knowing the fossils and the dinosaurs bones his name is richard owen he was what he was a scientist that searching about the fossils and the bones and the skeletons of the dinosaurs he said to him okay i want to draw a dinosaur how can i do that i don't know the shape of it he said you know we have some of the teeth some of the bones we can start with that and then compare what we have to other creatures around us and then by comparing the two shapes together we can fill in the blanks and make our own dinosaur so what is the the best thing that may be similar to the dinosaurs what do you think from the animals that we know around us what is the best thing that is similar to the dinosaurs like what Anything is similar like the dinosaurs? Any animal is similar to dinosaurs, my girls, or no? No. No? Nothing at all? Lizards. Lizards, maybe. Iguanas, maybe. Must, uh, alligators, lizards, maybe. There's a lizard that they say birds. Dinosaurs, birds. There are I some birds know. really similar to the birds that lived in the time of the dinosaurs. Hi, Tala. There is a lizard, mm. but it's not really a lizard. There is a lizard that is a dinosaur, they say, but it's not really a dinosaur. But it's actually a pair of dinosaurs that they. Yeah, they you know why? You know why lizards. lizards and iguanas are similar to the dinosaurs because many scientists they are saying that these small animals right here, lizards and uh, iguanas and alligators, are what are the sons of what of the ancestors of the dinosaurs yeah and the dinosaurs were the ancestors of these animals but then they became smaller 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 until we have them in this shape so before millions of years ago they were so big like bigger than a building even yeah, everything but how they have this theory because when they search everything on the ground on the earth they found some skeleton of a mammoth mammoth is a type of elephant but bigger than the elephant this is a mammoth yeah, I know it. It's huge. And this also is a mammoth. Lizards. Mammoth is the same shape and the same, subhanAllah, the same skeleton of an elephant. But it is bigger and it is covered with fur and has big, big horns like this. What this kind is... of horns are those? Yeah, those are so big and those are the mammoth that lived many years ago. But now they in, uh, extinct. There's no more mammoth. That but how do they have a photo? Is this but a they have shot? the skeleton. They saw the skeleton. This is a real skeleton right here of a mammal. Then oh, everything was living in uh, before millions of years ago was so big. Everything was big. The elephants were big. The wolves. There's also something called the great wolf. It's the same wolf that we have, but the bigger, bigger size. The great wolves. Uh, I wish we have a picture for that. One day I saw a documentary about it. It was very nice. Uh, yes. it's, it's brought that all the wolves that we have now, their ancestors were so big like the dinosaurs. They were so big. And this lizard is called Komodo. It's like, it's like in five um, islands in Indonesia, they live there. But the rest of the countries, they don't live. Mm -hmm. These are some shapes of the wolves that lived before. This is a shape for an animal that lived before that was so big. And the shapes of the it's size of the there. wolves that they have before was so big. Like, let me show you. Ah, this is the size of it. They say that the wolves that they used to live before was this size. Similar to human, like eight feet long. But the one that we have right now is a small like a dog. But before it was so big like a lion. And this is the shape of the, um, the lions and the tigers they used to live before. This is a woman or a lady. They compare it to a human. So this is the size of the animals they used to live before long time ago. Okay. This is the size of it. This is one of them right here. They were so big and so full of muscles. 
So then they become smaller, smaller, smaller until we have them right now in the regular shape that we have of the same wolves. So everything was before was bigger. So that's why when Richard Owen came, he said, you know what, we can make our own sculpture by just compare it to another animals that is similar to the dinosaur. We can compare it to lizards, iguanas, alligators, or whatever we have to just make the sculpture and the painting. And he did. He wanted to make this for Queen Victoria. Let's see Queen Victoria. Miss put the first. The first, yes. Young queen. But when I write the young, it means the first one, by the way. This is the Victoria when she became old. And this is when she was a young lady. She was a very fond and beautiful lady, by the way. She was the oh. queen of England. This is her photo. And this is her husband, Prince Albert. Was the love of her life. But he died early. He died early and he left her. And she remained yes. the queen of England for more for 80 years, she remained. And this 80? is you 80 years. Yes. There's a beautiful movie about her, the um, starring Emily Blunt. This is the one. See it, please. It's very nice if you want to see something about history. Miss, about can I queen see her Victoria. now? Hmm? How does she look now? She she's doesn't dead. Live. She, she's dead. She died she's already. Dead. Yeah. Oh. She died. Now the Queen of uh, Britain is Queen Elizabeth right now. Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. Because there's two Elizabeth, the first and the second. This is Queen Elizabeth that living right now, the old lady. Just let me show you. The, this is Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, I know. She's living right now, okay? This is her when she was a young lady. And by the way, she, she ruled for a long time now, more than 50 years, mashallah. She's still a queen. Okay, so this is uh, Elizabeth. Before Elizabeth, there was Victoria. So Victoria at that time, she was the queen of Britain. And Mr. Hawkins, he want to impress her by making something nobody made before because she was the queen. And he wants to show her something unique. Let's go for the next page and see what he did. Okay. Okay, just let's make it bigger. Let's read. Uh, Waterhouse threw open the doors to his workshop. Nervously, he tied it up here and there. His assistants came. His assistants came. Then Richard Owen. At last, the visitors arrived. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The queen's eyes grew wide in surprise. Waterhouse's creatures were extraordinary. How on earth had he made them? He was happy to explain. The Iguanodon, for instance, had teeth that were quite similar to the teeth of an iguana. So Iguanodon is what is the ancestor of an iguana. He just imagined it and he made it. Okay? The Iguanodon then must surely have looked like a giant iguana. Waterhouse pointed out that the few Iguanodon bones helped determine the model size and proportion. And another bone, almost a spike, most likely sat on the nose, like a rhino's horn. Just so for the megalosaurus, megalosaurus is another type of uh, dinosaur. Just so for the megalosaurus, start with its jaw bone. Compare it to the anatomy of a lizard. Fill in the blanks. And voila, a dinosaur more than 40 feet long. Waterhouse was also making ancient reptiles and amphibians. While Richard Owen could imagine their shapes, it took an artist to bring the animal to life. So with the help of two persons, one person is Hawkins, he's the painter and he's the, the, the artist who draws, and the other one is the scientist who tell him, oh, put a bone here, put a bone there, put an eye here. And he imagined everything in his imagination and he drew it to make it what a dinosaur that came into life. This is Hawkins and this is what Richard, Richard Owen. And this is a Queen Elizabeth right here and her 
uh, husband, the prince. And he brought them back to life. And she was amazed and she opened her eyes wide open. How could you do that? He said, only from my imagination. So that can help us, my girls, to say that whenever you have an imagination and a talent, work it with your imagination. You can have the best work ever. Even if you didn't know before or if you didn't see anything before, like what you want to do, just work it with your imagination. That's why the imagination is very important in our lives because without imagination, you can't create anything unique. So with the imagination, he could create these things. And it was the first pattern of those dinosaurs that ever was made at that time uh, by a man, ever at that time. It was done by Hawkins. Okay, we'll take the last part right here. Designing the creatures was only the first step. There was still the monumental task of building them. Waterhouse showed his guests the small models he'd made, correct in every detail, from scales on the nose to nails on the toes. With the help of his assistants, he had formed the life-size clay figures and created the molds from them. Then he erected iron skeletons, built brick foundations, and covered the whole thing with cement casts from the dinosaur-shaped molds. It is no less, Waterhouse concluded, than building a house upon four columns. Okay, so do you think it's an easy job to make a dinosaur this big? No. Of course it's not. And that's why when they came, he said, do you think it's, hard, it's very easy to make this? It's not easy. That's why I have steps to make every sculpture of these. First, I have to draw them. Like I have to draw a sketch for what I want to do. Then I have to make a small model out of clay. Because I don't want to waste a lot of materials. So I will start it only with the clay. And then number three, I will make life-size model out of clay. And I will make it bigger. Okay? This, the, the size that I wanted. But I will make it also out of clay. And then after that, I will make mold. What does it mean mold? Yani, I will have a, a sculpture, a, a mold that has the whole, uh, uh, the whole of what I, the shape that I wanted. A shape of a nail, a shape of a finger. Then I will put the cemento in it and make what the shape of it. And then after that, number five, I have to make iron skeleton. Why iron? Because the iron is the only material that can stand all of this heavy weight upon it and not fill down. So he has to make iron skeleton must support the foundation of what of the dinosaur. Number six, the last thing, and it comes after a, a long work, is what finish the dinosaur by what by putting bricks and putting some materials to go, to cover it and to cast it, uh, to put the nails on the fingers, to put the the last touch of that of that whole thing, and then after that link it all together, it becomes a dinosaur. This is the shape of it. So was it as, uh, an easy work to do compared to the steps that you have right here? What do you think? Yeah. Was it an easy job to do it? Yeah, I'd do that. You would do that. <laughs> then let's do that. I want you to make that, please. <laughs> you need Richard Owen, though. You don't have Richard Owen to help you. <laughs> so this person, remember, the beauty and the difficult about this thing that he made all of this without ever seeing a picture even one picture about any of these creatures yani making all of these creatures was only from his mind imagine so was it an easy job to do no no of course not it was creative and was brilliant and intelligent because you are a person who never saw something and you want to create it. How would you do that? Of course, his imagination is nothing but brilliant. Okay, my girls, we'll stop right here until we complete the next time. Who wants to read before we finish? Let's go to the Miss, beginning and read I'm it together. To yeah, me, please, 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 Can I read? Hiya, yeah, Jenna. Jenna, start with Can Jenna. Can I read after her? Okay, don't shout to me. <laughs> okay. Horse drawn. 
嗯 ，horse 叫啊 ，carriage is cluttered down the streets of London in 1853. Gentlemen lift their hats to ladies passing by. Children ducked and dodged on their way to school, but Benjamin Walter House. How Hawkins had no time to be out, and about Waterhouse, as he liked to call himself, hurried toward his workshop. In a park south of town, he was expecting some very important vi visitor visitor. Visitors. He didn't want to be late. Excellent. Taibiela complete from this side. As he neared his workshop. As he neared his workshop, Waterhouse thought of the hours he spent outside as a boy. Like many artists, he had grown up touching the world around him. By the time he was young, he was a young man. He found out he'd find his true passion, passion, animals, animals. Mhm. Mm like he many. He loved to draw. Mhm. Mm he loved to draw, draw and paint them. But what he really loved was sculp, sculp. Sculpting, 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 sculpting models of them. Through this, through his care and hard work, they seemed, they seemed to, to come to life. Okay, excellent, life. excellent reading, Yafiruz. Okay, my girls, let's before we go, uh, I want to tell you. <coughs> That for the homeworks I received for this week, I received me, me, me. from Fairuz, mm -hmm. from Tina, from Jana. Awesome play, Jana, by the way. So I received Thank from you. Fairuz, Jana, and Tina. Miss, and... I forgot to send you the play, but I'll send it to you today. Okay, do it, please. Um, okay. All of them, they did the homework. For the reading today, we have Fairuz. And Jenna also reading. And for participation, we have select all. Uh, uh, uh. Who's absent today? I think nobody. Judy? Judy is Judy. here. She was here, but I don't know. Miss Aunt Amal is not here. Amal? Yes, she's not um, here. She was um, here. She, she was, was here. here. She, but she was. She was here, so I can't. I have to give her. <coughs> so participation. Miss, today I will do the homework. And then we have also being on time. Okay, my girls, let's see. We have Amal 113, Fairuz 141, Jana oh 108. Judy 57, Jude 65, Judy 93, Mari uh, Maria, we have 135, uh, Mariana 76, Tala 105, and Tina 80. Okay, my girls, uh, remember, every time you give me homework, you will take points for that, so please do that. And uh, that's it for today, inshallah. Today, tomorrow, inshallah, I will see you. Stay safe and be okay. Bye-bye, my girls. Bye. Bye.